I have a new toy in the workshop, and since you can all read the title, there's no reason in hiding it from your view any longer. This is a welding motor generator from I don't know when. I... This is from the time when the only way to gather DC from an AC power source would be either to run a vacuum tube, which would be great for tiny amperages and very high voltages like in the radio industry, or you just hook an AC motor up to a DC generator, which is what this thing is. Hideously inefficient, I think it sends out like 60% of all the current going in just right out the chimney. I do not weld that often, so even if this thing should not be the greatest of all machines, then it's still going to be more than enough for my purposes. It's 11 kilowatt and um, it can do up to 160 amps. These are the only tags I could find on here. They don't really tell anything. There's no um, type on here. It's just the data of how many amps it draws, how many watts it puts out and you know the efficiency grade and so on. Um, but it's old enough to say Siemens Schuckert on here and Siemens Schuckert only existed until 1962 I believe so um, it's definitely older than that and the tag on here says 21952 which might indicate February 1952 probably you've got two sets of amperage ranges 30 to 70 amps and 60 to 160 and you choose these by unscrewing the nut and hooking the cable to the other pin. It's 40 volts each, so it's not dangerous even if you should get a zap with it. And you adjust your amperage range by adjusting the brushes on the commutator. Can you see the rack right up here? That's what turns the entire thing about. This here is the on-off switch. Basically it's a free position switch which lets it start up in a delta winding like such. Then once it's up and running you switch it over to star, which makes it run more efficiently and consume less power. And to switch it off, that's the third click. This is how things were done before you can just program an IC chip to do all the thinking. This is off, you can see, don't worry, I switched off the power. You can see that everything is insulated by this ceramic. Then you switch to the next step and now you can see that the endings of one winding are circuited together and therefore all the three coils in the motor are hooked up in series which is the delta configuration. And Then you switch over to star and now the ends of each coil are short circuited together. Welding of any sort creates fumes, and that's okay because I have a window right over the workbench. The problem is, this thing in storm doesn't really like to stay open. Matter of fact, a slight breeze is enough to close it down. So I guess my first welding project will be some kind of holder in order to keep the window open. Here are the two parts that will weld together. This thing will sit in the crest of the window frame and then this is going to get bent over this corner and welded right here so that the window can rest inside this angle. And we're going to cut out this edge here because it's going to interfere and not make the part fit in the corner properly.
By the way, did you watch Mr. Pete's series on his Parker machinist vice? If you didn't, go ahead and do so. He shows that his vice has a grub screw and a spring in the spindle so that the handle is rather stiff in the bore and that enables you to basically go ahead and do this helicopter motion without the handle moving out and all over the place. It's very, very handy. I know, I know, I want to see the thing well just as much as you do. But uh, the only chance to make this saw cut here pretty is right now because if I've got something welded here it's going to be in the way. So with that done, we're ready to start welding. Or are we? Nah, I'm just kidding, we're gonna get started right away. I think you're about as ready as I am, so let's give this thing a twist. There is a beautiful, beautiful weld bead. <laughs> I'll be honest, when I left my apprenticeship, my welds looked a little bit better than that. Matter of fact, probably my very first weld <laughs> looked better than this one. Um, well, it's been a year and a half. I think that's the main point. You know what, I'm not going to care too particularly about this one. However, the next weld I'll have to do is kind of a bit more important. So I think I'm going to do a little bit more practicing before I actually tackle that one. And BAM! Would you look at that? 
it's all a matter of practice. Welding, especially, it's such an art to get the, you know, the arc to maintain the proper length and to feed in the proper way and to have the angle proper. This is a very, very simple uh, bead I laid here. It's just two pieces straight together, but just goes to show it's not the machine that's at fault here, it's all me. You can produce a proper quality weld with this thing. <laughs>